How do you wire up a cord and a plug for a gas furnace? And how do you wire up a switch? Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make your own cord and plug for your gas furnace. And I'm gonna show you how to wire up a switch if you've got a gas furnace and you wanna switch. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, let's get started. We're in the attic of a new construction house. Here's our gas furnace. We've got a receptacle up here where we're gonna plug this in. And then we're gonna run that wire through this connector. And then when we get into the furnace, here's our power. So we got our hot and our neutral and then a little ground screw right here. First step, we wanna take the screws out of our 110 volt male plug. So we got three screws, get a Phillips screwdriver or Phillips bit, take these screws out, then you'll be able to take this out. You can see you've got a gold colored screw or plated screw, a silver plated screw, and a green. So green and then gold and silver. Your ground goes here on the green, your black goes here on the gold, and then your neutral goes here on the silver. Next step, you wanna take these two Phillips screws and loosen them up. Don't take them all the way out. This is gonna allow us to open this up and slide the wire in. Now next step, we are going to use our razor knife and we are going to cut the outer coating surrounding our wires. And then I like to go down and then I like to go around to get that coating off. And now you can see, we can peel that back make sure you didn't cut through the wire. We don't need much for the part that goes to the plug. And then what I like to do is cut all of this out of the way. Now that that's out of the way, we're gonna take and strip these three wires and you don't need much. We're gonna put it in the stripper. Mm, I'm gonna say right there is probably good. Maybe a little more. All right, now we're gonna take this wire and see we didn't do a lot. Now we're gonna take this and put it in here. Here we go. This through here. And then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take these three wires and go ahead and land them on the terminals. So gold, we insert our black. See that? Get your Phillips screwdriver flathead or your Phillips bit, whatever makes sense. Now you can see that one's landed. Pull on it to make sure it doesn't come out. And then we're gonna land the neutral wire under our silver plated screw. Like that, see that? And then we're gonna screw that one down. So here, I'll land this one. Look at that. All right, now we've landed all three. Make sure you tighten everything up. Now we just take this and you can see if you look inside, there's three screw holes. So you wanna make sure you line it up. If you line it up, it'll go together nicely. Now that I've got it lined up, if I lined it up properly, it shouldn't take much to tighten these up. Now, if we didn't cut too much, then we won't see any of that wire. See how we see a little bit of wire? So I cut a little bit too much. Now to make sure it's all secure, I'll tighten this part of that plug and that'll keep that wire from moving. But don't tighten it too much because you don't wanna pinch those wires together. Now, we take the other side and I'm gonna do a little bit more. See that? And you can pull some more of that off. Now let's cut that off. Now we've got our cord and our plug and we're gonna take the side with the cord and we're gonna 
go through our connector, half inch connector, and down to where we're gonna wire it up. And we're gonna go in through that half inch hole. And that's where we wanna be to make our connections. All right, let's go ahead and strip all three of these wires. Definitely need to make sure that the white and black wire, the neutral and hot wire, are long enough. And then we've got our neutral wire for our furnace and our hot wire. Looks pretty good. Now for this ground screw right here, I like to use a ring terminal to make sure we get a good secured wire. Now, if you don't use a ring terminal, then you have to take the wire and wrap it underneath the screw and a lot of it sticks out. Just doesn't really work as well as a ring terminal. Now we're gonna use a crimping tool and I'm going to crimp this wire. Oh, it looks like I didn't really get a good crimp. So let me redo it. All right, oh, looks like we're good. It's tight. Let's land this first. So we're gonna take this wire, we're gonna go through this hole, and then I'm going to take my quarter inch bit, take out that screw, and then here we go, just go through that ring terminal. Look at that, nice and tight, looks good. Now, we got several wire nuts to choose from. We've got orange, yellow. I could probably use yellow, but I'm gonna use red. So pull this wire back and then rubber tape or black tape is good as well. Uh, so yeah, that, that red wire nut, that, that works. Let's take this other wire here. White and white go together, black and black go together. This part is complete. I'll basically pull these wires back out of the way. I'll tape this with rubber tape and then I'll put this over it like this. Now you don't have to use wire nuts. You can actually use uh, different types of connectors. I'll put a link in the description so you can check out the different connectors. Thought I'd stop the video for a moment and show you different types of connectors that I use on a regular basis. The first one is called a push-in connector. And this is where you can join two wires, three wires, or even four wires. Then you have the lever type connector. See that, you've got a lever, lift it up, push the wire in, and then push the lever down. Then we've got inline connectors. And these are cool because you have a wire come in, you lift up this lever, you put the wire in here, and then the wire goes out this side. And these are inline lever type connectors. This is a brand. This is push guard. And then this is the other brand here, DCO, DCO, or DICO. Really cool products. They've got some good connectors. And of course, we've got these connectors. These are wire nuts. This is what I keep on my truck at all times. Let's take our plug plug it into our receptacle, check the power. Now let's check the voltage. We'll take our meter, put it on volts AC. We'll take our two leads, we'll put it underneath the wire nuts. And look what we got, 124 volts. And if we take and click this switch here, then that's gonna give power to our control board. Now I'm gonna show you how to wire up this switch. So we got a box here, we got our switch, we got our cover. This is the wire that comes from the furnace and I'm gonna run it up through this hole right here and it's gonna go into the bottom of this box. So I'm gonna mount my box right here and I'm gonna have to take out this knockout, which is no big deal. I'll get a hammer and a flathead or use my snips and my Phillips. I'm gonna take this out and I'm going to take this connector and I am going to run it through this hole here and then up into this box. And that is going to protect that wire that runs through the cabinet of the furnace going into this box. So you can see that's mounted in place. Now we're gonna take this wire and go up inside 
in that connector. And there we go. And then what you want to do is you want to use ring connectors. That's a great idea. If you don't want to use ring connectors, you're going to have to take this wire and go around this terminal like this, which is no big deal, but I would recommend ring terminals. Now, what we're doing is we are going to break the power wire or the black wire. This is your line. You got your line and your neutral, your power and your neutral. Yeah, I'm gonna use ring terminals. That is just, I don't like that. Let me know in the comments if you guys like ring terminals. We got both the wires going into the box. Make sure you always use a connector like this for any wire going into the box. For this example, I don't have a connector right here, but it's because I don't have an extra connector, but I'm not gonna leave this this way, so just know that. I installed ring terminals for the ground wire and then also for the two blacks, the one coming from the receptacle and the one going to the furnace. Now, how do we wire this? First, we wire the neutral wires together. So neutral wires go together. Then we want to take our screws out so we can land those wires with the ring terminals. All right, both of those are loose. Now let's grab this one here that goes to the furnace and put it under one of the gold screws. And then let's grab this other one that comes from the receptacle and mount it in place. And then we want to turn this though. This is not, not going to work. Also, you may want to put some rubber tape over this, right? So you may want to rubber tape that just so it doesn't touch anything. Now, last but not least, we wanna mount our ground wire underneath this ground screw, and we may need to use our flathead screwdriver for that. I'm gonna show you how the switch works. So we plug in this, which you would never have a plug and a cord going to a, a, a switch, a light switch like this. So don't think this will be typical. You'd probably have a yellow Romex wire coming into this. Now. We should have power, but it shouldn't be going through the switch. So I'm going to show you with one wire here going into the neutral and then one wire on one side of this switch. We've got power, right? 120 volts. So if we go to the next screw right here, we don't. All right. But if you flip on this switch right here where it says on, then we should see because this switch breaks the hot wire going to the furnace. Now you can hear the fans about to start, but if we turn it back off, what happens? It goes off because now we only have power going to the switch, not through the switch. And this is how you wire up a switch for a furnace. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. I hope now by watching this video, you learned how to make a cord and a plug for your gas furnace or how to wire a switch for a furnace. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe and smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. If you want more videos like this and you're a technician, you wanna be a better technician, go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I've got hundreds of videos on that playlist and they're there specifically to help you be a better technician. You've been watching Taddy Digest. This is HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad and I'll keep you cool if you let me.